Do you like weird Japanese cars? Do you like 1JZs? What about big turbos? Don't care about the kids' inheritance? That's good. Come with me. Welcome back to the Skid Factory. Last time you would have seen this crown, it was probably up at Golby's on the dyno. We did some basic mods to it and made 276 horsepower at the wheels. In the meantime, my mate Brad from way back contacted me and said, I want a fast car, I've never had one. What can you do for me? And I thought, well, I've got enough cars. How about this crown? He doesn't know much about cars and doesn't want to fix them himself, so a nice modern car like this that's got a JZ in it, not going to break very easily. That's perfect. I like how you say modern, but it's a 2000 and... What is it, four? Bro, it's not a Datsun 1000, so it's modern. <laughs> Keep telling you that. So after driving around for a little while, Brad wanted a bit more power, as you do. And it's quite easy to get power out of a 1JZ, so I'd already been speaking to Golby's about doing some more upgrades to it to help with their development of parts for these, for these cars. So we uh, took it back up to Golby's. They went through the top end of the engine, cylinder head off. We've got some Kelford cams in there, 260 degree cams. Uh, valve springs to suit. It's got ARP head studs and a head gasket from GRP and uh, that was all bolted back together and that's pretty much that's that was probably more than i would have done to it because i've got great faith in the toyota uh, 20 year old toyota engine are you a stock stud <laughs> toyota guy I'm a, to I'm a stock stud stock everything except the turbo guy but that's uh, that's another story so once that was done they could move on to the hot side which is where the power's made so it's got a high mount turbo on it now it's sitting on an artec uh, investment cast stainless steel exhaust manifold which is a relatively new product. Uh, the turbo is a Garrett G3900 with a 101 exhaust housing I think so the larger of the G30s and a reasonable size exhaust housing on it. The boys in the fab shop fabricated a 3.5 inch dump pipe that then joins on to the original system that you would have seen when we had the car up there in the first place. Once everything was bolted and fabbed up and some jigs made to reproduce it the car hit the dyno and uh, Jesse from Madoff Tuning tuned it up to 526 horsepower at the wheels. I'm not sure what the boost pressure was, but I'd say it'd probably be around 25 PSI. So not too shabby. Got plenty of use since then. Brad's an avid driver. He loves getting out and having a, having a drive around in it with his family and uh, also taking it to the track. It's been to uh, some cruise days and to some drag stuff. So. This is where you immediately find out that it, there's more to life than making more power. It also needs some other things done to the car. The transmission itself has got a Gilroy's valve body in it. That was also done when it was up at Golby's. So the shifts are now nice and crisp. These things do not like being run with a stock valve body. The, the shifting ends up taking quite a long time, which, which damages the gearbox for a start, but also not much fun. So that bit's sorted. Uh, it does need a, a, a better torque or a new torque converter with a much higher stall speed um, and that's something that we're searching for at the moment. They're, they're, not, um, so they're a little bit thin on the ground. There's some available for the 2JZ out of America but this engine wasn't available over there so it's a little bit of a... We have to have a bit of a search around and see what we can find. But for today we're going to address the fact that it, it randomly s smokes one tyre when it's not supposed to be. So we're going to upgrade the diff uh, with a limited slip or it's actually a Torsen diff. These things don't come with a, a limited slip function at all because they had a, a traction control system on them which was meant to take care of that. That works fine when it's got stock power but as soon as we start even going up into the prior to the big turbo it already needed it then. So we got a diff there, let's chuck her up on a hoist and See if we can make a diff out of a Subaru fitted Toyota and without having to weld things. That's, that's my wish for today. That tire worn out already.
Alan, this is one of those pictures that you can smell. <laughs> it's supposed to be connected to the metal bits in the diff still. Oh, there's a few chunky bits there too. diff came out relatively easily as it should. Uh, we did struggle to get these stub shafts out which have got to go into the other diff and there's a reason for that. They've, it's um, spent too much time spinning one wheel and it's actually galled up the, uh, the shaft and the part that that runs on which, is, which has oil passages and stuff. Um, so that's not very healthy. This is why you have a limited slip diff because single peggers are not good. Take note VR Commodore owners. Uh, so We'll give that a clean up in the lathe. The diff that we've got is out of a Toyota 86 or Subaru BRZ, depending on which camp you want to be in. Uh, it is a G-Series diff, exactly the same as this, the same housing, um, and it's we've never done it, but it's a known, uh, easy to get upgrade. It's a Torsen LSD, so like same as what sort of um, old Supras used to have in them, the Thupra, the Mark IV. Uh, so it's all geared, gear-based. Um, Good system. If you change the oil, you know, 50,000 Ks, it'll probably last forever. If you do single peggers in this one, it won't last forever. So let's fix that up, get it back in that diff housing and uh, slot it back in. One thing you've got to be careful of doing either this sort of stuff or gearboxes with, uh, front wheel drive gearboxes with CV joints where you pop them out, is that this seal, these things are pretty hardy, but they do have a little garter spring in them is that and that can sometimes do that when people pull the shafts out and they're rough and you can't really tell that it's like that unless you have a good look that that seal won't seal properly if that's like that and this will probably get mangled up in the in the workings that's going on inside so quite often you can just put, run your finger around like that make sure you can feel it there and make sure it's sitting in its place and they those things will uh, last pretty well with shafts being pulled in and out tackling this in the driveway at home you're gonna have a bad time with this bolt that holds the front diff cradle in this bush here is about a millimeter smaller than the one that came out of it even though everything else is identical so we've just taken a little bit off it you can either drill that or we just put it in the lathe and took a bit off so there's a few goes to try and figure that out why it wouldn't do up properly Are you going to do a skid? I can't. It's not my car anymore. How about just making some turbo noises then? Mm, probably do that. Converters are important, kids. 
Well, that's it for the update on the red crown wagon. What do, what do we call this thing? You've got a crown wagon as well. I don't know. I've got no idea. Or can we just call it Brad's car? Sure. Yeah, righto. <laughs> Comment below if you've got any cool <laughs> names. <laughs> Brad's been giving it a, a good workout at various track days and, and whatnot, and he's uh, enjoying himself. So that's, that's the main thing, of course. That's what cars are for. If it's making you miserable, put it in the garage and don't look at it until you're happy to see it again. Uh, just needs a few more tweaks. As always, cars sometimes don't just work straight out of the box. You've got, got all the engine power you could want, but not as much traction as he needed. We fixed that. Now we just need to get that turbo up and boost a bit faster with a converter. We'll work on that and uh, it'll be good to go soon. I think it's actually uh, it's a fair bit faster than your wagon, Woody. Is that is that the case? Yeah, oh, right, oh, yeah. Everything's faster than my <laughs> wagon. <laughs> that, that's that's true. That's true. Maybe we can fix that with something yeah, else. Yeah, I think I think that might be on the cards. That's <laughs> definitely going to be required. For the sure. embarrassment's real. <laughs> Honestly, a Mazda three is faster than. I, I I was oh. driving it and it, and all of a sudden I saw this thing in the corner of my eye and it was like a lady with a. <laughs> One of those walk. I was like, oh, at least it's it. the supercharger light was on and all. Yeah, at least it honks though. That's the good thing. <laughs> it doesn't even honk. It honks. There's nothing. It honks. It's really. It's got nothing going for right, it. Right, I start writing me off and wrap this up. <laughs> Comment below of what engine should go in Woody's wagon. Or Ford below. Ford JJ1. Wrong corner. Click. Yeah, click the link. What, what are you pointing for? What's the link for? I don't know. Click it anyway. Click the link. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Crown wagon. What do we call this thing? Yep. on to that uh, um it's uh uh it's uh 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 um uh uh um and uh oh, look at that. move tomorrow we tried to get the man in the car they didn't budge so then we're like oh we'll do it then place the deep in a crown alan be fun, they said. <laughs> just need some pimp juice down there. Yeah, just some pimp juice and a little bit of extra skills. <laughs> hey crew, recently I jumped on a podcast with my stepbrother Tim. It's called Mistake Mastery. It's the first ever podcast I've done. And I jumped on there to explain kind of my career, my path from being a mechanic into doing this whole YouTube thing. So I'm going to leave a link here. If the link's not there, check the description. It's called Mistake Mastery. It's available on all streaming platforms. And you might even gain some knowledge yourself, not only from my episode, but maybe from some other episodes. So check it out. Thanks for watching as always. There's a link here from other videos. And there's a link up here that's going to cover my face for merchandise. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Yeehaw.